All right, InfoSec and Cyborg Hacks podcast are here to help you prepare for and pass the CISSP exam from ISC2. So for today's hack, we're talking boot camps. If you've been preparing for the Certified Information System Security Professional or CISSP study guide for six months or more, you might learn better from a concentrated, focused environment with expert instruction. And that expert instruction comes from InfoSec Bootcamp instructor Steve Spearman, who has helped hundreds of learners prepare for and pass their CISSP. Steve will walk you through what the InfoSec seven day CISSP bootcamp is like, which can make the difference between passing on the first try and the headache and heartache of having to reset the exam. You don't have to do it alone, but to learn more, you do have to keep it here for another Cyborg Hack. Hello, welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of our popular Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution, or give you new insights into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. So my guest today, Steve Spearman, is an InfoSec instructor, but he's not just an instructor. He is our bootcamp instructor for ISC2's career-changing certification, the Certified in Information Systems Security Professional, or CISSP. So for today's Cyberwork Hack, we're going to do something that people have been asking for. We're going to take you on a guided tour of what it's like to take a certification boot camp. So I'm really excited about this, and I hope you are too. Thanks for joining me today, Steve. Oh, it's a pleasure, well, Chris, always. All right. Well, thank you. So, Steve, uh, just to get everyone on the same page, can you briefly explain some of the differences in boot camp training for a certification exam versus, say, academic class or self-study? Uh, intensity. It's like it is it is drinking from a fire hose for five and a half, six days, basically. Yep. Uh, yep. The CISSP, we do do five day boot camps, but typically six days. Um, and I can talk a little bit about, you know, how those end up being put. It's uh, they it you know, you can there, there are different ways to skin a cat. You know, you could do, uh, you know, an hour to two hours of study over a three month period or you could do a boot camp. And it's there, mm -hmm. you know, both of them can work for a lot of people. The boot camp is going to be the most effective way to do it yeah. uh, because you can get in, get it done, get out and pass the exam, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, the difference between taking a, a a polar plunge and like dipping your toe in in a frozen lake, you know, for five minutes yes. a day for six months straight is yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> one yeah, is yeah. one is infinitely desirable to the other because you're going to just you're going to yes. do it and you're yes. going to be done with it. So, um, so yeah. I want to talk yeah. about this. So we, we're talking five and a half to six days of a boot camp. I want to get a sense of uh, what the schedule is like for these days. Like, what? How sure. much of each day is spent on different domains or knowledge areas of the exam? Can you kind of give us a yeah. a day to day breakdown? Well, so there are eight there are eight domains in the on the on the uh, uh, on the uh, in the boot camp uh, or I'm sorry in the in the certification uh, it's a six day my 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 actual boot camp it's sort of instructor specific but my boot camp it tends to end around noon on Friday and it starts early on Sunday so mm -hmm. it's you could say six day six day boot camp um, and with the first part of Sunday is spent just kind of gearing up like in, we make introductions we uh we i i do things about how do we make the most of the week that kind of stuff then we get into domain one we we get partially done with domain one uh, on sunday we finish that up on domain on uh, we finish up domain one which is the he most heavily weighted Okay. Uh, you know, part of the of the exam uh, domain. Uh, then on, on day two, we do security engineering. That's when we get into crypto cryptography and digital certificates and digital signatures and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is not a technical exam. It's worth, you know, people need to understand that. But it is really, really important you understand certain technical concepts. And uh, and it's it's interesting. I actually don't have a technical background. It's very, very common for, you know, 60, 70 percent of the people in a boot camp that actually have more technical experience than I do. But I really enjoy teaching that more technical aspect. So security engineering and the next domain, which is, we cover on Tuesday, is tele is network and telecommunications. Those are the two most technical domains. 
Um, and then, uh, so when we finish up by end of day on Tuesday, we finish telecom and then there are four domains left and we cover two on Wednesday and two on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Uh, we finish up all the content on Thursday. Okay. So just, just to break it down. So that means Wednesday we cover, uh, uh, on, in the morning we cover, um, the, uh, the um well, gosh i'm risk um uh, authentic access controls okay and then sure. on in wednesday afternoon sorry brain okay. fart there yeah uh, yeah we cover access controls on wednesday morning we cover a security assessment on wednesday afternoon and then we do security operations and software on thursday by the end of day thursday we're done with all the content and then on friday we do what i call review yeah. Uh, so we basically go through some of the concepts. We'll review different mnemonics, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's an intense week. There's no question about it. Uh, yeah, we these also are full days, right? Yeah, right. these are full days. Uh, it takes about 48 hours. It's about 48 hours long. We spend um, we spend um, a lot of time doing questions in class. Okay. Um, you know, several hours worth during the week, like. Uh, where we just do at least an hour every day and, and, and even more probably most days. And so, uh, and, and, you know, that's, we, it's kind of, it just breaks up. I've had a lot of feedback saying they really enjoy the question parts of, of that. It's, it kind of helps build sort of the, the group dynamic. So, and that's an important component. The main thing that's sacrificed when we do a five day boot camp Monday through Friday, the Friday's full day, but is that we don't spend as much time on questions. And I think that that's, you know, that that's a bit of a loss. I'm, I'm not saying those aren't effective boot camps, but right. I think there's a reason that our default is a six day CISSP boot camp. There's just a lot, a lot to co cover. Absolutely. Now, um, I want to talk about the communication in these boot camps. I know pre COVID, we, we mostly thought of boot camp classes as something where everyone flew to a single site and barricaded themselves in a hotel room conference center with a mountain of pastries and coffee and sweated it out together. Uh, but these days, obviously, boot camps uh, are and have to be more flexible with remote learning and remote uh, entry and so forth. So I'm wondering how classes manage to retain this type of communication during the class, because it sounds like you do have a lot of um, back and forth with the class. Like, what what is what is that like in terms of uh, th these days? Well, well, one of the things, there's no question that, uh, you know, I, I like to say one of my mantras in life is everything's a trade off. Right. So mm -hmm. there are some real benefits to remote learning, to, to remote yeah. uh, uh, boot, uh, boot camps. And there are some things that are hard for some people, which is why we still do a significant number of live. I do a significant number of live on-site uh, boot camps as well. But the thing is, though, there is an inherent kind of structured communication capability built into Zoom, which is the primary platform we use to deliver these for example, chat. So yep. uh, chat, you know, you just, you know, that's you put in a chat message. I am, is, uh, I try to keep a close eye on the chat box. Uh, people will ask questions, they'll make comments. Um, it, it's kind of interesting, you know, in any boot camp, you have a, you have a range of different kinds of personalities from the, uh, from the highly gregarious outgoing people. Sometimes I have to, you know, it's like, you know, they can take over and that's a classroom management skill, you know, sure. and then you have the person <laughs> that's sitting in the back of the room and they're just watching everything. They're probably the smartest person in the room, you know, it's like, yeah. so with something like an online class, I feel like that it gives you an opportunity to, uh, to, to, to sort of just take your strengths kind of, you know, and, and, and take, that's true with on-site classes as well. But, uh, I think the biggest trade-off, negative trade-off, is just many, many, many people tell me they can't watch it, they can't look at a computer screen for eight hours, you know, or sure. more a day. Yep. Uh, and they prefer the on on site. We offer both yep. uh, there, you know, and um, we actually do we do hybrid classes where I'm doing live right. training and there's a there's a, a, a remote component to that as well. So um 
which you know I, I i think it's interesting it's like a you know it's you know whether you know have it managing it's challenging for the for the instructor but but we do them we get good reviews for those so you know it's yeah. it's uh it's you know it's a possible it's, it definitely works yeah so i want to I, I read the syllabus and you know uh, on, on our website and i see i see that evenings are often earmarked for uh individual or group study in order to make sure you're retaining everything uh, what are 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 these uh these are obviously optional, but what are these after class learning sessions like? Do you take part in these? Well, I don't do them uh, as okay. an instructor. That is uh, instructor specific. And I used to do them and I don't do them now for an interesting reason. Okay. I, well, at least I think it's interesting. Uh, it, it's that I think it is important that people spend time on their own doing homework. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's tempting. Here's the problem with group study. I'm a big fan of group study. And that's why we do questions as a class, you know, but People need to to go. They need to dig into questions. You know the the, the different ISC two questions that we use exam sample exam questions, and in a group dynamic, you have one person who's really on top of it and they're answering yeah, all those and questions. Else sort of and the person to the sitting back. right yeah. next. Yeah, this certain person sitting right next to them thinks they got it, but they mm -hmm. didn't. They just heard the other person. So, yeah, uh, I've just found it's most effective use of time to send people off. I do, you know, if you know, there are venues for doing group study and I don't I'm not saying don't do it, but I think it's important people spend time on their own. Uh, some instructors do it and I, you know, that's good. It's just but I, I we tend to finish our boot camp, you know, around between 430 and five in whatever time zone it's going to finish. And then I say, OK, you got a couple hours of homework to do. Yeah, I was going to say, so, regardless, you're you're definitely not saying don't study in the. <laughs> you're saying yeah, just yes, no, no. They you got to you got to keep your head in the in the in the in the content yeah, for the whole yeah, time. You can't yeah. put, take your head away from yeah. the fire hose. Yeah, <laughs> yes, no. I tell no. I say you need to. I even make the point that it's not just merely doing questions, but you have to really understand why the questions. Like if you get it right mm -hmm. or get it wrong, you need to understand why you got it right or wrong. So yeah. it takes you. You could just knock out a bunch of questions the homework questions which is 80 per night 80 questions per night and you know you could be done in 40 minutes but you're not doing your homework then you've got mm -hmm. to go in and dig into why if you got it right did you get it right because you were lucky or did you really understand right. the question if you got it wrong you got to dig in and say okay did i do i understand the explanation so yeah now um Let's talk about exam day. What's it like when you're ready to take the exam? Do people go right into taking the exam from the boot camp or do they give their brains a few days uh, to cool down? Or is that is that a, a worry that if if you do that, it kind of all yeah. sort of tumbles back out again? Here, Here's my recommendation. Um, with caveats, uh, I recommend that people don't exam, don't schedule their exam immediately following boot camp. Um, okay. And here here's why. Now, it's like it's a rule of thumb because you have people that come into the class that have been preparing for months and they're ready. They come into my boot camp. My boot camp is kind of like just the seal like they're. Yeah, it's like a ready. reinforcement to, uh, to make sure it's that a you, reinforcement. Yeah. They've been prepared. You know, I had uh, somebody in my my class, uh, you know, uh, several a few, few months ago. She was so prepared by the end. I, I joked. I said, we're going to have some bracelets made. WWLD. What would Lauren do? Like because <laughs> she was so prepared, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's like, you know, uh, yeah, varying things. The the third week following the ending of the boot camp seems to be a good target. It allows people, you know, your average learner to kind of know they're prepared. One of the things that I do during my boot camp is I give them what I, I say, here's when to know you're ready for the exam. It's what I call the readiness assessment. Uh, and, and, and so they can monitor their results uh, coming out of boot camp. And, uh, you know, and I, I I recommend that by the end of the boot camp, I want them to have scheduled their their boot camp sometime two to three weeks after. I'm sorry, the exam two to three week, uh, uh, week, uh, weeks after the boot camp. Um, and then if according to this readiness, you know, uh, test, if they're not ready, you know, two days before they need to push. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to, you know, I'd rather them, you know, I'd rather them, you know, pass than <laughs> So it's like, yeah. you know, that's why I tell them, here's how to know when you're ready. So, yeah. Now, that, um, and the uh, the other thing, too, is um, 
the day of, I don't know if you want me to comment like on the day of, but the day of it's like get there 30 minutes ahead of time, mm-hmm. uh, take, you know, you know, review a few of the mnemonics, things like that, and then sit down and take the exam. And then you're giving a given a whiteboard during the exam is go ahead and just write out your some of the mnemonics and things like that to, you know, get it out of your head if you can. Yeah. Now, um, do you find out how you did that same day? Like do you when you, you when do. you submit your test, do you get the results right then? You don't get it in the workstation. That's one difference between the C- CISSP and the CISM. The CISM tells you in the workstation, congratulations, you passed. Mm-hmm. You the exam ends, uh, and then you you go uh, to the proctor, and they give you a piece of pe- piece of paper, and it says either you provisionally passed or we're sorry, but you didn't. Uh, if you provisionally pass, it doesn't tell you how you did on the domains. You have to pass all the domains. Mm-hmm. If you fail it, it says how you did on each domains, either oh, above okay. proficiency, that means you passed, near proficiency, close, uh, or below proficiency, which are those are the domains you need to focus on. Well, that, that's good. I know I, I know a couple other exams give you absolutely nothing in terms of, you know, other than pass or fail. So it's good to know that at least yes. you can you can get a sense of, yeah. of of what you need to sort of strengthen for next time. So uh, and you can wrap up here uh, for listeners considering taking a boot camp for certification exam study. Steve, what advice or evidence can you give to listeners who are wondering if if this is their best option? Like you've, you pretty well laid it out, but let's just kind of wrap that up a little bit. I mean, the the key thing is that we know statistics. So here, here's an interesting thing. Uh, you, we don't know the pass rate. The, the ISC2 doesn't, doesn't publish it. Uh, it's something I wish they did publish, but they don't. Yep. Uh, if you Google, Google like pass rate, you get a pass rate as low as 20%, as high as like 70%. Mm-hmm. Um, I would imagine that between 60 and 70 is correct, uh, mm-hmm. is probably correct. Uh, but what's the, this is what we know. We know what our pass rate is. We monitor it closely at InfoSec, mm-hmm. and it's over 90%, right. a little bit over. It's not way over 90%, but it's, you know, it's it's 90% plus. And, uh, and, and, you know, so here we're talking about, assuming I'm correct, that it's probably the pass rate is between 65, 70%. That's a, that's a significant boost in pass, rate, pass rates. It's and you know, so if you want to know the the best cheat to take for uh, passing the CISSP, your best cheat is to take a boot camp. It just yeah. statistically, we know it's the you know the best way to prepare. Um, you know, uh, I'm and I you know I've I monitor different forums of people that do self preparation and study, and there are many many of them that pass, but uh, but there are a lot of them that don't. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. So the you know it's it's your best way to you know have a go in with a high degree of confidence that you'll pass the exam. All right. Well, Steve Zuren, thanks for this entertaining step by step tour through your CISSP boot camp. I hope it gets a bunch of new people in there. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Uh, and thank you all for watching this episode of Cyberwork Hacks. If you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you, please share it with your colleagues, forums, uh, or on your social media accounts. That really helps us out a lot. And definitely please subscribe to our podcast feed. You can get it on any of the places you get podcasts or go to YouTube and type in Cyberwork InfoSec and you will be well on your way. Uh, we got plenty more hacks to come, including several more CISSPs with uh, Steve Spearman. So if you have any other topics you want us to cover, drop them in the comments below. Uh, until then, happy learning. See you then. Thank you. Hey, if you're worried about choosing the right cybersecurity career, click here to see the 12 most in-demand cybersecurity roles. I ask experts working in the field how to get hired and how to do the work of these security roles so you can choose your study with confidence. I'll see you there.